The FBI broke into the home of a former president. That's never happened in this country before. Are they coming for us next, as some claim? Or were they just doing their job? We're going to find out. This is The Paul Martin Show. Okay, guys, so welcome. It's rare that I'm going to cover a breaking news story. There's always a breaking news story, as far as I'm concerned. This is unprecedented, truly. It's never happened before in the history of our country. It didn't even happen with Richard Nixon. The government, the FBI, has never issued a search warrant and gotten a warrant and broken into a home and taken stuff. Never happened before. And so this show is going to be about what in the heck is going on. Now, if you've watched before, this show is not a show about politics. There are much better talking heads out there that are smarter than me, that know more about politics. This ultimately is a self-improvement show. My heart, my vision is to bring unity to broken relationships. And there are a lot of broken relationships today in this world. You know what I'm talking about between you and your parents or aunts or uncles or grandparents or friends over politics, over religion over science. It's a massively divided country, but that trickles into our relationships. And I'm absolutely certain that to the degree that we can understand some of these issues at a deeper level, and I offer some new different kinds of ways regarding ideas going on, we can actually improve our relationships with others because ultimately there's nothing more important than our closest relationships, especially when they're broken or even broken off. And so let's get right into it. Presidents obviously work for the government. Presidents are government employees, no different than your public school teacher, no different than the guy that's issuing issuing parking tickets in your city, no different than a congressman, no different than a police officer or someone in the Navy, right? We have government jobs. They are on the federal level, which is where the president works at the federal level. They are on the state level sometimes, like a governor of a state or a highway patrol man or a woman. They are on a county level and they are on a city level. But remember, we're a representative democracy. And part of our democracy, part of what's woven into our constitution is this idea of checks and balances. If we're a democracy, if the, if the government works for us, which I know it's not perfect, but basically, that's the way it works in this country. We're not a dictatorship. The government works for us. Record keeping is vital. Record keeping is part of government work, whether it's on a city, county, state, or federal level, so that there could be accountability. So when you go to the DMV and you get a ticket or whatever, there's a copy of that made. You right now could call your high school and get your transcripts from when you went to high school, right? We keep records. It's part of just what it is to have a government because we have checks and balances. And that works at the state level with your governor, with your state representatives. It works in our courts. We have court recorders that literally record everything said. So I just want to underscore that keeping of records is built into the idea of a functional democracy for the issue of checks and balances, for the issue of knowing what went on. And basically what happened in this situation, the president of the United States took records, took lots of records that are kept. He took them with him when he left. And mishandling government materials is a crime. In 2005, one of Bill Clinton's officials was prosecuted for destroying three copies of one document. And at that time, that was a misdemeanor. But in 2018, because of Hillary Clinton's violations with her emails, Donald Trump amended a law and he made mishandling of government records a felony. And you can see on the screen there that this was changed. The mishandling of government records is a felony. And so we have a situation where it's not really denied. This whole section right here, these are facts. There's nobody on Fox News or CNN, either side. These are just, I'm just reciting the way things are. We have those two things established, right? Records are important to keep. We keep them and they're part of the whole deal, but you can't mishandle them. And then the third thing is, and this is just another thing in a sequence, search warrants are difficult. 
it's hard to get search warrants in this country. We have the Fourth Amendment. And the Fourth Amendment says the right of the people to be secure in their p- persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated, and no warrants shall issue, but upon probable cause, supported by oath or affirmation, and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. And so what happened was that the FBI became concerned. There are these documents. Some of them are classified documents. The president had them. There had been a delivery of some documents in January, but there were more. And the FBI was concerned. This is not supposed to happen. You're not allowed to do that. And so the FBI went to a judge. And this is one of the most important parts of this show. The FBI didn't do anything. They're not allowed to any more than your local police department is allowed to break down your door if they think that you have drugs in your house. That doesn't happen. What the police must do, what the FBI must do, what the U.S. Marshals must do, or the state troopers, or whomever, or the detectives. They must go to a judge because of the Fourth Amendment, because of our right to privacy, which is branded into our democracy, into our Constitution. So what the FBI did, Christopher Wray, who was a Trump appointee, by the way, that's really interesting. This is a Trump appointee that said, hey, this isn't good. And they went to a judge, a federal magistrate, and they had to show probable cause. They had to show the judge that a crime was being committed at Mar-a-Lago. And the judge said, I have sufficient evidence. You have your warrant. So the search happens, and authorities believe the documents remaining at Mar-a-Lago had national security implications. Now think about this. It's one thing if you call your high school and you're trying to get your geometry grade from your senior year because you need it. It's another thing if the president of the United States has a conversation with a high official or leader of Iran or Russia or China or North Korea, right? Though that information is in the public domain, so to speak. It can't be grabbed, confiscated, and sequestered into somebody's, anybody's basement. It's public record for classified but it's public record. And the FBI went and they got the stuff. And Christopher Wray supported it. Attorney General Merrick Garland said this. He said the search warrant was authorized by a federal court upon the required finding of probable cause. So there's nothing new about this. I mean, people are saying crazy things. I'm going to talk about it in just a second. But there's nothing really unique here. This happens thousands of times every single day when law enforcement has suspicions about laws being broken, even with child welfare, if they suspect that child abuse is happening in a home. They can't just knock the door down. They have to go to the judge. They have to say, we have an affidavit signed by a neighbor that said we heard, you know, screaming and hitting and right. This is the way it works in our nation. And it's only a judge that can grant the power to break in to someone's private property. And so so what do we do? Again, this show is about relationships. That's the, the you know, that's kind of civics lesson or a little bit of history or maybe the politics behind what's happening in the situation in a very rough kind of way. But it seems to me that you have two choices, that I have two choices, that everybody has two choices here. And choice number one would be one where if you don't agree, if you're a Republican, if you're not happy about this, that you would say to yourself something like, we don't believe Trump did anything wrong. We are very skeptical about the Department of Justice or the FBI and the way they handled this. But the information has to come out. Garland got on TV today made a short statement, but said there will be more forthcoming. There will have to be more that comes out because the Republicans will demand it. And it would seem to me that one prudent way to handle this would be to suspend judgment. I I talk about suspending judgment. It's something that ancient skeptics talked a lot about 2,000 years ago. We don't do much of that today. You know, we plug into Rachel or we plug into Ben, and then we hear what they say, and then we go out and we repeat what they say. I'm not into that. That's not what the show's about. That's not the way to learn. 
I mean, they're going to tell you, Ben's going to say it's the Democrats' fault. Rachel's going to say it's Republicans' fault. There you go. That's not what I do. So it seemed to me prudent to say, yes, our government does keep records. That's normal. Yes, it is against the law to mishandle records. We know that to be true. Yes, the FBI did go to a judge and the judge said, okay, you may go to Mar-a-Lago and go get this stuff. And, and now we have the stuff. The government, the FBI has the stuff. So that would seem like one way to go. Or there's another way that isn't, isn't a way to go. It's already going. And it concerns me. Let me just read a few zingers from the last few days. There's a lady running for governor in Arizona, Carrie Lake. She said that the invasion of Trump's home happens all the time in this country. Warrants, search warrants was one of the darkest days in American history. Another popular right-wing talk show guy, Mark Levin, I don't know who he is, but he said, this is the worst attack on this republic in modern history, period. So this is bigger than 9-11, according to that. Um, Michael Caputo, a Trump advisor, said, with this militant raid on President Trump's home, we have become Russia. The FBI is... The KGB. Uh, I mean, I can go on and on. Uh, The Gateway Pundit, a pro-Trump outlet, wrote, this means war. And yesterday on Twitter, the phrase civil war was actually trending because of this kind of, I mean, it seems like it seems like drama to me, to me. Another guy said, Dinesh D'Souza, the FBI, an organization set up to fight organized crime, has become the most powerful organized syndicate in the world. So we can say I don't agree with it. I want to learn more. I'm going to wait for more. There's going to be more to come. Or we can plug into our source and let the person speak for us. I'm going to close here. We are bound to believe the opinions of those we listen to. We are bound to believe the opinions of those we listen to. What I stated today is not political. I stated a bunch of facts. They're as true on Fox.com as they are on CNN.com. They're not disputed. They are true. We can suspend judgment until we learn more. (laughs) That's what I'm going to do anyway. Please hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.